Hey everybody, Mr. B here and welcome to the channel. As you can see, we are not in the loft, we are in Alabama and we're gonna fire up this electric smoker over here and we're gonna get to cooking, so y'all come on. So let's talk about the equipment that I'm going to be using today. What I've got here is a Masterbuilt 30 inch electric smoker. This thing is fantastic, especially, you know, if you're kind of new to all of this and, uh, and are a novice, you know, I'm trying to focus more on, you know, um, cook control, temp control than I am fire management at this point. Maybe one day we get there. Uh, this is fairly foolproof here. You've got your thermostat, you can go up and down, you've got your timer. Um, fairly spacious inside for your needs. You know, four racks, you got a water pan and uh, some dripping pan. I keep them wrapped in aluminum foil for easier cleaning, right? So, um, and then off to the side over here, You've got your you got your chip tray. So you just basically, you know, open this little puppy up, put your chips in there, your wood chips, and uh, you just turn it down, hits that element, and that's where it's going to start the smoke. You've got your damper, your chimney, right here, so you can kind of control your smoke penetration. Now, one of the cool things about this, now your professionals will tell you these are good for some things, but you know, it's not gonna be 100% like someone's actually, you know, running a fire with charcoal and hickory and all that good fun stuff. But this thing is like an outdoor oven as well. So, I mean, this is Thanksgiving week. So think about that. Um, you know, Aunt Sharon's bringing over a green bean casserole that nobody's gonna eat. It needs a place to kind of hang out because oven space can be precious. Well, you know, just turn this thing on about 250 degrees and uh, it's gonna hold that temperature on that thing. And then maybe you'll even forget about it and uh, nobody will have to be subjected to that abomination. Um, so yeah, there you have it, guys. Um, I think it's a great little piece of equipment easy to use, um, you know, pretty straightforward. And um, it's multiple use as well, right? Like with the outdoor oven type function. So yeah, anyway, this handles a, a good smoke, um, a good, you know, braise. And uh, you can even get a glaze in here if you want to. Um, I've done, seen some professionals say that they will actually use these for the braise portion. Um, it keeps you from having to go in and out, like if you're going to finish something in the oven, um, but then you're going to bring it back outside to put the glaze on it. Well, this will enable you to stay outside and it'll enable you once you hit that braise and your smoke, um, you know, uh, phase, I guess, is, is over, then, it, you know, this will enable you to do the braise, but also save on your charcoal and your wood and all of that sort of stuff, your fuel, if you will. So uh, yeah, there you have it. So let's get on to some country style ribs, kids. Once we get them kind of cut down, we're gonna hit them with some, some rub here. And I am using a, uh, just butt rub. What do we got here? That stuff right there. You know, you get some really good rubs uh, at the grocery store these days. But, uh, you know, if you're wanting to experiment and play around, by all means, go for it. Um, another thing to flip here, you want to get both sides. And what we're going to do once we get these rubbed down is um, we're going to let these sit overnight in the fridge and uh, sort of a dry brine, if you will. Dry rub. And we have it into the fridge overnight. We'll get them on the smoke first thing in the morning. All right, guys, I've got the master built coming up to temperature. I've got it set at about um, 275 or so. We're about 176, drop the camera. One little nuance about this little machine is you've got to set a timer. Otherwise, if you don't, it's gonna turn itself off, which is a good safety feature, but just be mindful to just set the timer. And I don't time, I go more on temperature when I'm cooking like this. Um, so I just like, you know, set the timer for six hours. We'll be way done before that. 
Okay, so I pulled these out of the refrigerator, as you can see. Um, we let them kind of dry rub overnight. They're looking really good and sticky. I pulled them out of the refrigerator for about, about uh, I don't know, 20 minutes ago while we're waiting on the Masterbuilt to kind of heat up. Um, this allows it to kind of, <laughs> I was going to say temper. You've heard me talk about that, but hell, it's in the 50s today. Um, so I don't know how temper it's going to be. I want to talk to you a little bit about what makes a country style rib country style rib. In the grocery store, you're going to see them basically two different ways. One is like this, which is basically a Boston butt that is cut um, into steaks and then typically cut again in half um, to make a riblet, if you will. I sort of made a mistake when I asked the butcher to cut these. I should have had, I asked for three quarters inch thick. I should have gone for a full inch. I think they would have been a little bit better, but it's fine. It's still going to be delicious. The other way you're going to see a country style rib in the grocery store is basically um, a cut off the loin of the hog. And um, you will see, you know, kind of some rib bones uh, still attached. It depends on where in the, uh, uh, you know, the loin that they're, they're cutting it up. Um, you'll also see these labeled as Western style rib. And back in the day, oddly enough, my dad always referred to these as backbone. And that's the way that they were labeled uh, in the grocery store, at least here, you know, this part of the South for years and years. So when I got out on my own, I was craving some backbone. It was in the grocery store. I couldn't find any damn backbone. I asked the butcher and looked at me like I was crazy. Um, that's because, you know, they're also more commonly known as um, country style ribs. So here you have it. I'm going to get these racked up and um, we're going to get these into the smoker. I'm going to use uh, some apple wood today. Uh, we're going to smoke for about two hours and we're going to pull them. Um, we're going to put them in a pan with some apple cider and some barbecue sauce maybe um, and some butter and then cover that up with some aluminum foil and we're going to braise uh, till they're coming to about 195 uh, temp wise. All right. And that should take, mm, I don't know, maybe another hour and a half, two hours. We'll just have to see. So enough jibber jabber on this and uh, let's get going y'all. A little bit of cooking spray on my grates just to kind of keep it from getting a little too cray cray, you know. Want to get it kind of lined up so where smoke can get around it really good. Here's a good example of, uh, you can't see it though, but here's your blade bone out of that Boston butt. Delicious. Okay, these are gonna be ready to go, man. Okie doke, guys. We've got, we're at temperature here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start my smoke pulling out. You've got to be careful now because this thing's going to be a little hot. Using some applewood chips like I mentioned. I'm just going to get that going. And we just slide that in. And this will get us started. Turn it over. It hits that element and it's going to start to smoke. Now every time you open this thing you are going to lose some temperature so I want to get going and uh, Start racking up here. One. All right, so just by doing that, I've lost Mm, about 50 degrees, right? So it's going to take a minute to come up. I'm going to calibrate my chimney just a little bit to get that smoke going. And I'm going to add smoke chips to this uh, the first two hours, about every 20 minutes or so until it stops. If it stops smoking, I add a little bit more, you know, lather, rinse, and repeat. All right, we'll see you guys in about two hours. Okay, so we've been smoking now. We're coming up on two hours or so in there. So it's getting to the point where it's taken probably about as much of the smoke as it's going to take. So I want to prep um, 
for the braise phase of the of the cook here. And what I'm going to do, yum, is uh, basically start with a little bit of uh, barbecue sauce. Any barbecue sauce will do. I'm using Sweet Baby Ray's. We're going to get some of that in our braising pan. Whoa! And in addition to that, I am using some local apple cider. This is from the Crow Mountain Orchard here in North Alabama. Absolutely delicious. Using this just to thin it out a little bit. And then I'm just going to take my whisk, whiskey whisk, and you're just going to blend it to incorporate. And we're going to pull them ribs out, get them covered in this sauce, and then uh, let them go for about a couple hours until they hit temp of about 195, I guess, however long that's going to take. You could also use some pineapple juice if you wanted, or just plain old apple cider vinegar would be, give it a nice tang. I like the sweetness on my pig though. That's a million damn dollars. Okay, now, I'm gonna need to kind of move pretty fast here for temperature. All right, let's see how we're doing. Got some really good colorization going on there. So we'll get these pulled, put into our pan of sauce. Ah, uh, we're doing real good, real good. Better than I thought, better than I thought. I'm just gonna make sure everything gets kind of a coat on it. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yum. You know, just roughly, I'm not gonna be too particular about it. We'll glaze them after after they braise. I'm gonna let this braise go, I don't know, hour or so, hour or two. I'm gonna throw them on the gas grill to get the glaze on them, I think. You know, sometimes you just gotta improv a little bit. So I put those in the braising pans and the pans were too damn big <laughs> to go on the, uh, to go back in the smoker, totally fine. I just fired up the uh, gas grill over here, put two burners on and um, set them on there for the braise. I'm gonna have to use the grill anyway to get the glaze on them um, after they've braised for a couple hours. So why not, you know? I don't have the oven space inside or I would do that. Um, because, you know, we've got a peach cobbler going on, we've got baked beans going on. Um, there's just no room. So, you make do, kids, you make do. Okay, we have been braising now for about uh, two hours. Starting to run out of some daylight here. So I'm going to get these on for a glaze carefully. Oh, yes, indeed. Let's take a look at that there. Ain't that purdy. We'll get them on the grill on a low heat. Just falling apart, just like you want them. Yeah, let's just hit these up with a little bit of yum sauce here. Okay, well, let's get to taste this back down here. Look how tender that is. Absolutely pull apart. Mm. Yeah. That's like candy right there. Mmm. You can taste the smoke, the uh, spice from the rub, and that sweet baby rays, and it doesn't get any better than that. Mm. 
Well, that's it for country style ribs, guys. If you liked the video, click like, subscribe, come along for the ride. We got some more smoking coming along. We'll see you next time. Cheers.